for myself. A very warm welcome again to our first webinar, uh, the first webinar in our series of Red Plus Monitoring, Measuring, Reporting and Verification, our Training the Training Trainers series. My name is Sarah Carter and I'm representing Goffsey Gold and Wageningen University, two of the organizing partners. This webinar series has been sponsored by the World Bank Forest Carbon Partnership Facility with support from the FAO, GFOI and many others. This webinar is the first of seven webinars which will be delivered between April and June of this year and participants who participate in at least six of the seven webinars will receive a certificate of participation after the series. For more information and for links to the materials which have been discussed in this webinar, please visit the link to the Goffsey Gold website which you can find on this slide. You can also contact me using the email address at the bottom. By the end of the week, the recording of this webinar will also be available on our website to download and watch again when you want, and the same will apply for the other webinars. So firstly, some housekeeping information. This webinar will last for about one and a half hours. I'll give an introduction to the series, and we'll have two presentations from on the Goffsey Gold World Bank training materials and also the Red Compass, followed by a short break of two minutes, then we'll have time for discussion with the presenters. If you have questions, you can type them in the chat box in the webinar control panel in, at any time, and during the two-minute break, we'll compile your questions and pass them to the presenters. You can continue posting questions in the chat box at any time. Our first speaker is Martin Herold from Wageningen University, who will introduce the first tool, which will look at the Goffsey Gold World Bank training materials. These materials contain lectures which can be used to train MRV professionals and they contain a lot of the theory necessary for Red Plus MRV activities. Martin will also give some information about um, how these materials can be used and what they've already been used for. He'll give an overview of the training activities which have been undertaken as part of this project. Martin, the floor is yours. Muted. Hello everyone uh, and welcome also from my side. Um, welcome to this webinar series and this webinar series is part of a broader effort of uh, some of the leading international organizations to provide assets, methods, tools uh, to ease the way countries and interesting organizations can do their capacity development for Red Plus monitoring. Um, there's been a, a lot of investments being done uh, towards Red Plus monitoring. We all know why, I guess. Uh, we all know the importance of it. We also know struggling in improving their capacities uh, for national estimation and reporting. And um, besides the fact that a lot was invested in providing community consensus guidance, expert guidance on how to use the IPCC good practice guidelines for Red Plus reporting, there was still a need to try to use these basic guidance in a much more practical way for capacity development. And that was basically the reason why we uh, uh, moved on and developed uh, a whole bunch of training materials um, that I will introduce shortly. Uh, these training materials were then used in a bunch of regional training workshops. There were four in total uh, that have been uh, done over the last one and a half years. Um, these are also, uh, these materials are also available online. And uh, we have now also turned these training materials, which are mostly PowerPoint lectures and materials into recorded lectures. That's a process ongoing and will be available soon as well. And now basically as the, as a, not a last step, but was a, as an additional step is now we'll try to use them or provide them as a, as an underpinning for a series of web webinars, so the webinar series we're talking about here. So um, these modules, uh, as part of these training materials, there are 14 in total. Uh, they are available in three different lang languages, and they're really based on these guidance materials that have been developed by the community. So these guidance materials include things like the, the methods and guidance documents of GFOI, the Global Forest Observation Initiative, the Gossi Gold Sourcebook, and, and, and other ones as, as well. There are a lot of the world leading people have helped us to, to develop these and they have also been recently updated and are basically available free and open um, uh, for everyone to use uh, at, these, at these websites you can see here. 
um, the, these modules, each of these 14 modules contains background lectures, so those are basically PowerPoints uh, with lecture notes, uh, so that everybody who wants to uh, provide a course or training or, or wants to introduce that topic, they can use it uh, in addition to these guidance materials to, to basically introduce and present the background. So these background lectures are really intended for everybody who would like to give a basic training uh, but also use it in any kind of uh, uh, yeah, information sessions where they introduce the concept also of red plus monitoring the importance and some of the technical means and technical backgrounds. We also have country examples for each of the modules where they show how some practical implementation activities have been carried out in developing countries. Um, these are particularly intended to showcase some of the, the MOV project managers or the people who are managing this stuff, how in the design and how, in the, uh, how the implementation experiences from these different circumstances can be perhaps translated into other uh, situations. Um, and we have practical exercises. They're rather simple exercises uh, and short tutorials to really uh, do some of these concepts that were introduced in, in the lectures, perhaps taken up in the country examples, really show um, how to show them in a hands-on uh, circumstance, so really provide some implementation exercise, which is really something that you maybe want to use for training your technical staff or the people who have to actually deal with the, with the data. Um, here is the 14 modules. Uh, there are three intro introductory modules mostly on background in design. So for example on the, the UN climate convention context for red plus monitoring, how to build national forest monitoring systems and how to assess and analyze drivers. We have then a big block uh, on red plus measuring and reporting. Those are these technical modules on how to drive activity data using remote sensing, how do you estimate emission factors, how to incorporate community-based monitoring approaches, how you deal with issues like biomass burning, estimation of uncertainties, and also in status of evolving techno technologies. And we have a last block, which is really on the red plus assessment and reporting, where we have modules on national data organization and management, on reference levels, and the last one on reporting, performance using the IPCC Good Practice Guideline. And you see here also this slide, the people that have been leading the development of these modules. Um, as I said before, all of them are available uh, to download uh, from the Govsi Gold website uh, in the various languages. Um, and uh, you, you can download also an, an introductory guide on how you would use them in practice. And keep in mind all these um, uh, materials which are to a large extent lecture slides or so PowerPoint slides. Each slide also contains uh, a, a information text for the person to teach it so you can you can ease the way you can use these slides in a in a certain context and of course what we see in practice is that people often download these materials and uh, also uh, you know it, it basically adapt the slides uh, for their specific uh, training needs and add slides on the, on their own, for example, to make more specific uh, in certain country cases, because there is a nature of these materials, they are rather generic. Um, this is also the website where you will find um, the recorded lectures uh, once, they are, uh, once they are completed. And we are in the process of doing that. In fact, we are almost comp complete, so we will soon find these recorded lectures on there as, as well. And recorded lectures means that the experts that have developed these modules will basically just go go through all the lecture lecture slides and, and and use them as a training. So you might use them for yourself or might use them as a background to maybe train yourself to 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 deliver that that lecture. I already mentioned we did a series of regional workshops in the, uh, different parts of the world where we uh, had um, some almost 160 participants from 43 countries that were trained. Um, we received a lot of positive feedback from, from these and um, we also uh, got a lot of uh, feedback that says yeah, we're interested in further activities related to the use of these materials and one of them was to actually have pre-recorded lectures on, online um, and also to have a bit of a webinar series so we can also use it for that purpose and that's actually the reason why we have gone that path and really developed more these e-learning tools um, that basically we're doing right now. 
so in terms of the recorded lectures, uh, this is the, the plan uh, that all of these modules will be recorded and you can see the people that will be uh, doing the reportings or basically have done the rep reportings. Um, so this basically as the background, again the idea is about training the trainers. So these materials are there for you to use in your training. So it's ease the way you do your training activities and we are hoping that they can uh, act as a base for multiplying the training effects that we can do. A lot of people, a lot of the international experts invested a lot of time in creating these modules, now recording them. And so really my, my plea would be try to make, make use of them and also don't hesitate to ask questions if you, if, if, if you have any or you have feedback on, the, on these materials. That would be my uh, introduction. And uh, with that, uh, I wish you a successful uh, webinar series, a particular starting one uh, today. And I hope to hear back for the other ones uh, coming up as, as well. And I'll pass back to Sarah. Unmuted. Thanks, Martin, for that introduction. Yeah, we hope that you will uh, all take a look at those materials um, and see how you can use them in your own training needs. Um, also, the recorded lectures, when they're online within the next couple of weeks, please keep an eye on our website and you'll find everything you need there. Um, so now that we've had a, an introduction to the Govsi Gold World Bank training activities, including the recorded lectures and a background of the webinar series, I'm going to give you a bit more introduction about what we're going to cover in this particular webinar series. So the series is designed to help you negotiate the Red Plus MRV process. And along the way, we will introduce a number of tools and methodologies which support this process, from designing systems to getting technical guidance, analyzing activity data, emissions factors, uncertainties. And um, I'm just going to show you a slide in a minute um, where you can see some of the materials which we're going to cover in this series. Um, and for, we'll also talk about the purpose for which you can use each of the tools. This slide does not cover all the tools and materials which are useful for Red Plus MRV needs, um, but these ones are the ones which we are covering during the webinar series, so that's why we've included these. So please be aware that there are many other tools and materials which could be useful for you. Um, so. We are going to um, cover many of these tools during the series and this slide shows you which tools or um, methodologies will be covered by each webinar. So we're going to start with um, the first webinar, so the number one on the slide, which will cover the Red Compass and also some guidance materials including the Red source book, which is very much related to the training materials which Martin talked about and also the GFOI MGD, which is the methods and guidance document. And Carly, our next speaker, will talk about the Red Compass and the MGD in a lot more detail. So you're going to hear from her shortly. Following on from this, we will um, have a webinar next week on the World Bank FCPF uh, decision support tool for Red Plus um, needs and then we will go to um, a webinar focusing on activity data and we'll look at two tools which you can use to um, analyze your activity data, BFAST and BIODA. You can find a lot more information about the details of each webinar on our website. Um, then we'll go on to community-based tools, um, how you can inc incorporate data from community-based monitoring into your na national forest monitoring systems. Um, and we all have potentially three speakers um, covering that webinar. Following on that, we'll look at uh, forest degradation in a lot more detail. Um, we're going to have Winrock International presenting the logging method, which um, they have been responsible for. Um, and they'll also talk about the background to degradation, how to define it, and some of the difficulties involved with monitoring degradation, both using um, on the ground activities and also using remote sensing data. Um, Following on that, we'll go to uncertainty analysis, how to um, estimate the accuracy of your um, 
for example, activity data estimates. Um, and the last webinar, we'll look at CEPAL, which is a tool from the FAO. And this tool is very useful for cloud-based um, computing uh, that you can use to analyze and manage data for your national forest monitoring systems. So our next speaker is Carly Green from GFOI. And she is going to tell us more about the Red Compass. So, Carly, the floor is yours. Muted. Thanks, thanks, Sarah. Uh, so, as Sarah mentioned, my name is uh, Carly Green. I'm the Methods and Guidance Component Manager for the Global Forest Observations Initiative. And it's a great pleasure to be able to present here this evening, or it's evening my time here <laughs> in my side of the world. Uh, so I'm going to present uh, a little bit about the GFOI, uh, about the methods and guidance document, but primarily focus on presenting the Red Compass platform, which is an online platform um, that you can access, from which you can access the methods and guidance document and all of the tools that you'll be um, uh, that will be demonstrated through this webinar series. So uh, as I said, uh, the, I'm from the Global Forest Observations Initiative, which is an initiative led by the governments of Norway, uh, this Australia, uh, the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites, and uh, the US government to the USAID Silver Carbon Program. It's also uh, uh, the United Nations FAO, uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization, is also involved in the initiative, as well as collaboration with the World Bank, FCPF program, and Gossy Gold. So you can see that the initiative is a really great collaboration um, and, uh, of, all of, of a number of uh, key uh, governments and institutions uh, involved in uh, Red Plus MRV, and you'll be seeing a lot more of uh, the material of all of these partners over the series of the webinar. But today, I'm going to focus on presenting uh, one, initi one uh, uh, um, initiative and output from the GFOI, which is Red Compass. And uh, the first uh, slide up that you can see uh, has the URL for the, the, uh, the platform. So if you just go to gfoi.org slash Red Compass, uh, you'll be able to access uh, the Red Compass platform. And it's slowly going to change, I hope. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> so a little bit of background about uh, the rationale of Red Compass and a little bit more about what, it's, uh, what the platform um, provides. So it, it's effectively uh, an online um, platform upon which you can access the, primarily the GFI methods and guidance document and then also get access to a range of other guidance training resources and tools that are consistent with the MGD uh, all in one location. It presents the Red Plus MRV um, in a step-by-step -step approach and also links uh, those steps to a series of actions that each country has to take to complete uh, a national forest monitoring system for Red Plus MRV. Um, the platform also provides access to uh, the most appropriate guidance and decision trees and training materials which are associated with each of the actions outlined in the, in the platform. So you get access to those tools at the point which you are most interested in, in finding them. In, it's, in addition to providing access to all of these resources, uh, Red Compass also uh, enables you to log in and create a MRV profile. And you can then mark uh, against your profile which of the actions you've completed. Uh, you can also identify priority training areas or any other um, uh, areas that you need uh, assistance with, such as data, um, and helps you to identify and develop implementation and improvement plans, the key uh, uh, functions of the platform. Sorry. Next slide. So the Red Compass was funded by the Australian government as its uh, contribution 
to the GFOI as the MGD, as the funder of the MGD component. Uh, we started the process, the design process of the Lead Compass platform early in 2015. Uh, the prototype um, was developed and tested at a series of GFI workshops really targeted at trying to establish the needs of uh, Red Plus countries. And so the, the true audience of the platform are Red Plus countries. And then we finally launched the tool in uh, April, well, the, the platform in April 2016 at the GFI plenary. So it's been operational now for one year. And we've had a pretty good uh, um, user statistics since its uh, release and uh, with around 3,000 unique users having access to the site over the course of the last 12 months. The Red Compass uh, platform is designed in the same uh, format as the GFOI MGD, uh, the Methods and Guidance document. So the Methods, for those of you uh, who have, uh, are not so familiar with the Methods and Guidance document, the, the document's been written by a series of uh, around 60 uh, experts and reviewed uh, quite extensively by a further uh, 60 to 70 uh, um, reviewers. And the document um, was really uh, filling a gap um, between the IPCC guidance and Red Plus um, requirements. So it maps, if you like, the IPCC good practice guidance or the, the 2006 guidelines as well to um, Red Plus activities. Uh, so it's a, quite a comprehensive um, uh, document that covers a range that. Uh, basically the four core themes which are effectively make up the four core um, level one headings in the document of MRV um, for Red Plus reporting. So um, we cut across institutional arrangements, policy and design decisions, measurement and estimation and reporting and verification. It then presents uh, the um, second level headings in the MGD as a series of uh, pyramids. Um, which um, visually represents the, um, the structure of your, oh, I guess the process you go through in, as you establish your MRV for Red Plus. And so uh, if you consider the pyramid structure under those four core themes as the second level headings in the MGD document itself, um, that, that's um, it's a visual, visual representation of the document. The purpose of this visual representation was really make the MGD or the, the useful guidance in the MGD much more accessible so that you can um, more quickly, more directly uh, um, access the specific guidance that you're looking for. So for example, the concept of the red compass is that you would um, work uh, upwards through the pyramids and then towards the right of the themes. But of course, this is a very um, systematic way in which you might develop an MRV, but we all know uh, that sometimes uh, you need to work in a much more dynamic way where you're crossing different types of themes and concepts. And so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a linear representation, but of course the, the process of developing such a complex system requires consideration of across all of those um, themes and concepts um, as you and and sometimes going back and making changes as you as you um, progress and continue to improve your national forest monitoring system for MRV the way that we've tried to make uh, an additional sort of workflow um, um, feature of the red compass is to attach a number of actions to each of those uh, themes so for example, under institutional arrangements, within the four concepts that make up that, um, that theme, we've identified 27 actions that need to be completed um, to cover off on, on all of the aspects of uh, Red Plus MRV. So those actions come from um, some from the UNFCCC decisions, particularly in the design decisions, um, design decisions theme. But then of course, they can also come from programs such as the SCPF, um, they have their own methodological guidelines and some of the institutional arrangements and reporting and verification requirements are specific to that, that, uh, that program. 
within this structure, each of the tools, uh, the training materials and the uh, other guidance that you're going to be uh, presented over the course of this webinar series are also made available through the Red Compass. And I'll demonstrate that uh, in the following slides. So uh, back to the front page. So this uh, is a screenshot from the front page of Red Compass and I'm just going to work you through some of the features and functionalities of the platform. So first, um, if we look uh, to the, um, the, box, the red box uh, item here, it says Red Compass Resources. If you click here on, uh, well, I'll click here on Red Compass Resources, it will take you to, oops, back too far. It will take you to uh, uh, a very simple uh, page where you, with hyperlinks to all of the uh, supporting uh, guidance documents, uh, additional modules that uh, the NGD component uh, delivers, training materials and tools that are linked to the, to the platform. This uh, list is continually updated as new materials and, uh, and tools become available. And so this is just a, like a quick ready reference of of where you can access certain tools if, uh, and um, material if uh, you know what you're looking for. If we now look at search the MGD, uh, we're very uh, fortunate and um, that we've, uh, well, uh, um, we're very proud actually that we've been able to release the second edition of the methods and guidance document uh, late last year in 2016. And then now the uh, Spanish and French versions are available through Red Compass of this of MGD2. So if you know you would, if you if you're after some specific uh, guidance from the methods and guidance document, you can search and read the methods and guidance document um, um, by clicking on this link here um, in the HTML format. And so this is a much more interactive way of uh, um, accessing the methods and guidance material. In, in that it also provides hyperlinks to all of the references, all of the um, additional um, well, uh, decisions and, and other things that uh, the MGD offers as it, as it uh, presents the guidance on Red Plus. So uh, this, uh, this uh, link uh, on the Red Compass allows you to directly read the MGD um, from the front page. You can also download uh, the methods and guidance document in uh, English, French and Spanish um, by clicking simply uh, on the, the other, uh, the third link on the front page and um, you can uh, then read it at your own leisure. Of course, you don't get the same functionality as the HTML provides, but um, you're able to print it obviously and, 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 and have it uh, readily on your desk. So they're the basic features there um, related to the methods and guidance document, which really forms the foundation of Red Compass. So throughout, as you explore deeper into the themes, uh, concepts and actions, which I'm about to take you through, the MGD is a constant uh, companion through the, the platform. Um, but if you're looking uh, to, in a more general sense, then you, would, uh, then you would access those three links I just described. So let's explore a little bit more um, into Red Compass and uh, take a trip through uh, measurement estimation, themes, concepts and actions. So you click uh, here on the, the, um, on the purple theme, uh, measurement and estimation, and it will take us um, further uh, into the pyramid page. So here we are. Um, at our pyramid that I showed earlier in earlier slides. And um, as I said, uh, the MGD sections that are, um, that are relevant to measurement and estimation are listed here. So you can access um, some specific income, um, sections of the MGD. And now we're going to look a little more um, deeper into um, remote sensing observations to demonstrate the additional um, depth um, of the Red Compass platform. Once, oh, whoops. 
like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. So once we've clicked on the um, on the uh, uh, remote sensing observations, something else to note is at the top um, uh, menu you can drop down the related links uh, uh, menu, and this gives you uh, some more context uh, within relation to remote sensing observations in the measurement and estimation um, theme. So what this menu shows you is that all of the actions that, and the concepts that are related to red, uh, remote sensing observations also are influenced in some way by concepts and actions um, in uh, institutional arrangements, in policy and design decisions, and even in reporting and verification. So what this is showing you that uh, some of the decision making, some of the processing, some of the uh, outputs, or some of the documentation that are required to meet the remote sensing observation actions will be influenced by or will influence other parts of your MRV. So there's a little bit of, um, I guess, intelligence in, in the platform to enable you to think through what um, you're working on and, and I guess what decisions in the past may influence your um, decisions uh, in, this, uh, in this concept. That's just a nice sort of reminder to, um, um, to, to utilise this uh, related concepts uh, menu, quite useful. But if we recall, we're in uh, remote sensing observations. Again, we have the MGD sections readily available here uh, that we might need some more guidance about some of the actions, which you can see now appearing underneath the triangle. So the action uh, um, worksheets is what we're going to work through next. Um, and these actions are specific to the remote sensing observations concept that we clicked on that's in the measurement and estimation um, theme. There's that purple, that purple pyramid. But let's explore a little bit more about these actions and, uh, and how they can support us through um, designing and, um, and implementing our MRV. So as you can see here, um, we have a number of actions. Oh, oops, uh, sorry, I'm going too fast. My link's a little, oh, I'll just go back. There we go. So you can see here, there's a number of actions underneath the pyramid, um, and there's even more. This is just a screenshot. For those of you who have been able to log on to Red Compass or to, to open up the platform, we'll see there's a few more actions. We call these uh, action uh, worksheets. And so you, you can see here, um, this one is closed and this one's closed, but I've clicked show and, and, and it's expanded out. And you can see there's like this little worksheet related to the action. Um, and this action is uh, um, asking us to, um, to generate uh, our activity data and associated uncertainty estimates. So that's what this action's about. So here in this worksheet, you can get access to some tools that are useful in helping you to do this action. You can also be reminded about some related concepts. So decisions made in, uh, in the green theme, uh, institutional arrangements, and also in the blue theme, uh, policy and design decisions. Some of those decisions or actions relate to the completion of this action. So you can go, these are links that you can go back and see what maybe decisions are being made um, in relation to those that may influence your your work here at this point. Okay, so for example here, if you had an interest in, in, in using Open Forest to support you in, uh, in uh, generating some of your activity data, you can click directly here to the link and it takes you straight to the external link of the FAO who manage the Open Forest toolkit. Okay, and that's, that goes the same for all of the links um, to all of the resources and tools that the platform has linked to it. So if we head back to our, um, our page, one of the other features, so basically all the features that I've showed you up until now, sorry I keep clicking my button, I'm sorry for that, um, uh, all of the features that I've demonstrated up until now in Red Compass, you can, act, you can uh, access all of the material, use all of the site as I've shown you, without logging in. So it's, uh, it's, it's all of that um, 
all, all that I showed you, all that experience I just showed you is, is all, can all be completed without having logged in. Um, if you do log in though, you get access to a, a range of other um, uh, features and functionality which I'll now take you through. I'm not going to take you through the detail in how to, uh, how to log in, but um, if you, you can log in at a number of locations. Uh, up here is sign in and register. You can also uh, click down here under application and sign in, um, sign in here. You can sign in at the bottom of each uh, page. Um, so there's a number of locations on the platform where you can um, create a profile and log in. I also recommend, uh, which I'll show you towards the end of the presentation, um, uh, if you scroll down the front page, there's a number of um, short uh, videos, short uh, demonstrational videos that, that take you step by step through the sign-in process, uh, as well as a number of the um, features and functionality that I'm demonstrating here. So if you uh, um, don't feel listen, like listening to me for 40 minutes to get through those, you can also listen uh, to short two to three minute videos instructional videos on, on Red Compass off the front page. So once you've logged in, um, you can then, you'll see here, you can also uh, get a whole uh, lot more access to uh, features inside these action worksheets. So for example, uh, what's What's new here, what, what, well, what's, what stays the same is the links to the tools. That doesn't change. So you get access to those whether you're logged in or not. The related concepts remains the same as well. But you'll see there's a number of other fields here now uh, that are new that you didn't have access to before. So if you've logged in, you can now state, change the, the state of the uh, action. So you can change this state of the action, if you've completed the action, if you've generated your activity data and conducted your uncertainty analysis, you can uh, mark it as done. Um, if, it, if, if this particular activity, um, which of course it isn't for anyone, but there's a couple of actu act actions in here that aren't applicable to, to you because maybe you're not part of the SCPF or maybe you are um, made a different design decision, then you can click them as not applicable as well. Uh, so this is a feature here. Once you've uh, made that uh, choice, uh, um, uh, selected that label, then once you've and you've logged in, then it stores that information for the next time you come. Up here, you can also uh, mark uh, a particular um, label related to comp competency. So you may uh, have a drop-down list here that. Um, you can mark as either trainings required, uh, no training required, um, maybe there is some other um, um, opportunity for improvement that you would like to make. So, so there's uh, so the ability to mark here um, whether or not you need some training. You can then qualify any of, the, um, any of these labels that you've put, done, not done, not applicable, on competency in terms of training required or not required, you can qualify some of that here in the in the action um, response. And so this is uh, an opportunity for you to freely write, um, you know, uh, something that's related to you. Um, so there's no drop down list here. It, it's just free free writing. And of course, that also saves um, as part of the signed in features and functionality. If you are using the tool, like a workflow tool, you can also um, add a tag uh, and, and, and there's a, some drop-down suggestions for tags here. Again, this could be something like um, um, uh, it's a repeating exercise. So for, for in this ac ac action, obviously something that you're going to have to do over and over again um, by uh, generating activity data on a, on a semi-regular basis as part of MRV um, Red Pass reporting. So um, this is an opportunity to put something like repeating in there or if there's some other drop-down tags and you can explore those. Again, what's useful here is to note that even if you're signed in, it's obviously not compulsory for you to fill out the um, particular um, tags or uh, drop-down lists or the response. Um, you can continue to use the tool and uh, without having to have completed every one of those fields. 
So they're, they're optional is, is, uh, is the point. Okay, so that's the core um, uh, additional features that you can uh, access if you've, if you've logged in. You get some feedback um, from the platform if you've logged in and you've been able to complete all the actions related to remote sensing, for example, in this context. You get uh, ticks so that each of the segments or concepts, segments of the pyramid or concepts of, uh, of the platform um, are completed, then you can demonstrate some sort of uh, progress towards the completion of your, um, of your MRV to the point where, um, yeah, progressively work through all of those actions, then you progressively get uh, the, the segments of the triangle filling as uh, completed. The final feature of the platform um, from the signed in perspective is that it's, it does produce a report um, of all of the material, uh, all of the responses that you've uh, stored in your, um, in your uh, profile and you're able to print this report out um, and it gives some indication of how many actions you've done, um, how many training um, opportunities that you've identified and the third one there is how many themes you've completed. So if we're reminding ourselves that the, the four core themes are the four core headings of the methods and guidance document. And then visually represents how many actions out of the total that you've completed for each of those, um, of those uh, themes. And you can see here we've been working in measurement and estimation for this webinar. We've done quite well. We've uh, completed four concepts already. So that's a big tick to us. Um, and then um, part of the report that's missing off this screenshot is that everything that you've put into each action is then listed um, below this. So you get a full printout of all of the material that you've stored in your MRV profile. So you can use this report for a range of things internally um, within your own uh, organisation or your own um, work to track um, and communicate um, with your peers. So as I, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, if you'd like some more uh, short demos on how to get the most out of the Red Compass platform, then please scroll down the front page and you'll come across these, uh, these short um, uh, instructional videos uh, and feel free to, to watch those. Especially useful uh, in, in uh, working through the sign-in and registration process. And then, of course, uh, if you have any questions, if you scroll further down um, the, the tool, you can um, um, click contact us and um, your query will come through to the GFOI. Uh, and those queries um, uh, can be related to the platform itself, or we're also happy to hear um, from, from users of the methods and guidance document uh, and um, for ideas or some uh, additional challenges that people are having that we can then further support in uh, additional uh, guidance or or, uh, or material. And then finally, I'd just like to thank, uh, of course, uh, all of the um, GFOI uh, partners and to um, particularly make note again of uh, the strain contribution to, to the platform and then of course to all of the GFY partners for supporting the platform and, and, um, and making uh, um, consistent material available through, through the platform to hopefully make it easier for you to access the, the tools and resources that you need to complete your uh, um, National Forest Monitoring Systems and work through MRV for Red Plus. And so I think I'll leave it there, Sarah, and I'm really uh, looking forward to any questions that I can uh, answer. Unmuted. Great, Carly. Thanks for the very comprehensive overview of the Red Campus. Um, that was very interesting, and I'm sure that a lot of people have some questions for you regarding how to use it, what they can use it for, and, and many other things. So please, um, if anyone has any questions, 
you can type them in the chat box, which you can find on the control panel for the webinar. Um, we're going to take two minutes, um, so you have a couple of minutes to think about your question and to post your questions there. And we have the presenters ready um, and available to answer your questions um, in the next couple of minutes. So stay on the line um, and please post your questions and speak to you in two minutes. Muted. Unmuted. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the webinar. Um, we've had a lot of good questions from the audience, so thanks, everyone, who's asked a question. Um, hopefully, we'll have time to get through as many of, the, of those as possible. But if you have question, more questions that you, you've thought of or follow-up questions, um, please feel free to post those, and we'll also try and cover them as well. So, um, Carly, first of all, I have a question for you. Um, we have uh, an online participant, Philip Kimuru, um, who has asked a question um, on um, the use of the red compass for localized emission reduction programs such as landscape level red plus projects. Um, so, Carly, maybe you can give some information about the scale of projects which you can use for the red compass um, and related issues. Can you turn on him? Um, so muted. Unmuted. Just can you uh, Carly? I'm, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. 
So thanks, thanks for the thanks for that question. Muted. Uh, the the red comp the actions that are uh, uh, embedded in the platform, the red compass platform, have um, really been designed, I guess, uh, initially at the at the national level. So we've, we've really drawn on the the UNFCCC decisions, uh, the uh, World Bank FCPF methodological guidelines to uh, establish those um, those actions. I also have a lot of experience at project level, so some of the actions have been had some influence from my own experience. But um, I'd really be interested to see if uh, was it Philip who could uh, who uh, if he, if he could work through those actions and, and give some feedback on, on how he how he found them. Um, they certainly haven't been designed specifically for say the climate, community, and biodiversity standard or the verified carbon standard, but um, I wouldn't say they're totally irrelevant, but there may be some in there that aren't relevant, is what I would say. Unmuted. Okay, thanks Carly for that answer. Um, we have another question, um, again on the red compass, um, and it's about the use of data. So if, for example, a user has their own data, can they incorporate this into the red compass? For example, they're using a lot of GIS and remote sensing data, um, and uh, yeah, so maybe Carly, you can give us some more information um, about that. Yeah. Muted. Uh, so the Red Comfort platform, it doesn't directly link or store, um, well, link to remote sensing data nor store um, files or data. What it does do is it stores your, um, your own uh, judgment, your own uh, dis uh, discussion points around where you're at with the different actions. So uh, in the context of, um, of uh, remote sensing data, as I was demonstrating in the measurement estimation theme, you might uh, in the, in the um, free response um, uh, field, you may write in there, uh, I guess, what data you used and, and what, uh, where you can find that information. But the platform itself doesn't, um, you know, it, it doesn't calculate anything. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't store uh, your files. Um, it provides you access to tools that that do that work for you. Yeah. Unmuted. Thanks, Carly. Um, I have a question um, for Martin, um, and the question is that the recorded lectures um, and and also the, the webinars um, are, are apparently going to be in English, but are there any plans to do these in other languages, for example, um, French or Spanish, because we see that, the, that some materials are, are available in different languages. So Martin, can you just comment on that? Muted. Yeah, thank you for the question. I mean, as you say, the recorded lectures, the ones we're going to put online very soon, and also the webinars have been in English, and that's, yeah, that's because the English is probably most commonly used. Uh, we understand that there's also a lot of demand from the French and from the Spanish-speaking side. All the training materials, the lecture materials, and, and all of that, this is available in three languages, in French and Spanish. The regional workshops we did um, in these various parts, there are also some in English, some, one was in French, the other one was in Spanish. So also these materials are available. There is currently no plan to do these webinars, so let's say repeat these webinars, also the recorded lectures in uh, French or Spanish. Um, so, um, well, that's something that could be thought of. Um, the other thing is, of course, these uh, webinars or these, also these recorded lectures are mostly as a guidance, to understand them as a guidance to use these tools and using the tools would mean you might want to go back to the, um, the lecture materials and actually use the lecture slides and these are available in, 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 in French so you can produce and can do solid French and uh, Spanish uh, language training using these materials. Um, uh, Carly, I, I also understand the, the Red Compass or the, at least the MGD is available in other languages. Perhaps you want to comment on that as well uh, from, from, from your side. Maybe what's the plan with the Red, Red Compass, for example, if, 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 if any. Unmuted. Yeah, Carly, can you comment on that? Thanks, thanks, uh, Martin. Yeah, so the uh, methods and guidance document is uh, available in uh, English, French and Spanish. 
The Red Compass is also fully translated in, uh, in French and Spanish as well. Uh, we are uh, tracking uh, what, which countries are using uh, the, the methods and guidance document or accessing the material and also accessing the platform itself. And I, um, I can say from, the, from, from GFY, we had a plenary last week and uh, there was quite some interest in understanding if there was demand to translate red, uh, at least Red Compass into other languages. So I think that if we get uh, the demand, then at least Red Compass, all the actions uh, um, and uh, some of the most popular or most useful guidance of the MGD could be uh, available in other languages. Okay, thanks Carly um, for the answer. So we're, we're really looking forward to having more materials available in different languages. So I, um, hopefully you'll, you guys will find that those things do become available over time. Um, we have a question, um, perhaps it's a bit um, broad, but maybe you can just quickly answer this one, Carly. It's about um, other Red Plus related activities such as consultation of stakeholders, um, social and environmental safeguards and these kind of things. Can you just quickly explain what is and what isn't included in the Red Compass in terms of these uh, aspects of Red Plus projects? So, uh, in terms of guidance uh, that's available on Red, Red Compass, the MGD, uh, we cover, uh, we, don't, we, we, well, we discuss safeguards in terms of, uh, of the Red Plus decisions, but we don't go into a lot of detail of, of how to address the safeguards. But um, there is additional uh, guidance um, on Red Compass, particularly the FCMC manual, which was a manual or a guidance document developed by uh, USAID, and they go into a lot more detail about how to, how safeguards are uh, treated in uh, Red Plus MRV. So um, I would say it's uh, there's that would be your best uh, best resources at the moment through Red Compass on safeguards. Okay, thanks, Carly. Um, we have a question from Khan Inam Ula, who is asking. Um, how can we use the Red Compass when there's multiple provinces and maybe multiple people involved in, in the project? And I guess this is a good question um, to understand whether it's better to use the Red Compass on a kind of national level and to have a centralized um, profile that, that people use or whether they can use it as an individual working as, as part of a bigger project, um, maybe just on one component or in one province of a Red Plus project. So can you explain how that would work, Carly, and what the best approach is or, or what options are available? Thanks, Sarah. Uh, this is a really great question and it's a question that's come up uh, more and more uh, over the last 12 months as people have started to use uh, Red Compass as a, I guess, as a planning and a, and a workflow um, framework. Uh, at the moment, the, the feature for multiple profiles or accessing or um, having, having multiple users on one profile is, is not available, but it's definitely one that has become uh, quite a priority for in, in improvement plan for Red Compass. Um, at the moment, we, we have used uh, Red Compass in a similar um, sort of um, experience in, in, a, in a training session where um, the, the users ended up, uh, it would work differently for different countries, but, but one, one group, one country decided to make one profile and give everyone the login details, but, uh, and then everyone just uh, worked within that one profile. Then others chose to um, to just focus in on their own particular um, responsibilities uh, with their own profile and then uh, at regular meetings use the reporting function as a way of updating each other of their progress um, um, in, in their particular section. So at the moment, uh, I said, I guess the direct answer to the question is can, can multiple users access the one profile without compromising the data. At the moment, that feature is not available, but it certainly is one that we've prioritised for, for improvements. Um, and then I think at the moment, just get a little bit creative about what works for you 
in the interim until that uh, that that um, improvement is made. Unmuted. Great, thanks, Carly, um, for that answer. Um, we have some more questions um, on the Red Compass. So we have um, another participant on the line, Akosita Lawai, who is asking, what if um, you've filled in the Red Compass and you have some activities which are not completed? Um, how should, how how can we use this information as a, a user of the Red Compass, and how can we move forward? And what does that tell us about our progress um, in the Red Compass? So maybe you can, um, yeah, give some information about the more practical use of the tool. Thanks. Muted. Unmuted. Uh, so we've we've used uh, we've, well, I, I guess there's been a couple of examples that where we've used uh, the Red Compass to support countries in this in this. Uh, um, in, I guess in this situation. Um, so uh, last year we worked through uh, all of the actions with uh, five uh, Pacific countries and each of those countries worked in a group of say five or six um, specialists across the different um, themes of the, of the platform and, um, and, and they went through each of them the actions and, and identified I guess uh, in terms of done or not done uh, I guess whether or not they needed some training or, or whether the training had been conducted but they needed some more sort of dedicated one-on-one um, -on -one, um, uh, support or um, if something was completed um, they'd moved on and, and, uh, and to, to the next sort of concept or theme. At the end of that process uh, we um, used the reporting function to then prioritise uh, a number of training um, requirements, uh, prioritise a number of actions that needed to be completed um, to make sort of like a, a work plan or a schedule um, or an implementation plan for the next three, six, twelve sort of months. Um, um, and then, and then the, the countries were going to use that as a communication tool either um, within their own departments with uh, donors that may be um, working in their country or even consultants that were working in their country to complete those aspects of the of the of their NFMS or the MRV. So um, so it was quite useful as a communication tool um, to 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 uh, well firstly to identify what those priorities should be uh, and then as a communication tool with with donors, with with, uh, with technical support people with their own colleagues to try and, um, I guess, prioritise those those next actions that need to be completed. Great. Thanks, Carly. Um, if people have other questions, please continue to type them in the chat box. We're checking that right now and um, uh, looking for your questions. So we're, we're hopefully going to answer as many as possible, like I mentioned. We now have a question for Martin, um, and it's about the practical experience of people who have been using the, the Red Plus modules. So, uh, you know, how these have been used in, used in practice. Um, we know that training the trainers modules so have they been used to train other people um can you perhaps give some examples martin yeah thank you for the question um so the the uh, let's say uh, the basically the kickstart of the use of these uh, training materials was in these regional workshops where we basically uh, inform people about the modules uh, what's their content and actually also pra practically train people on how to use them for their own training and that's so we didn't go through them all in detail but we really uh, made sure that people can take them up and basically take them further uh, for their own training and we did some assessment uh, after these workshops and there is a there is an important multiplication effect so that uh, on about factor of 10 that people actually have been trained so people have been using the materials in practice and that's good to see and we also got some important feedback uh, uh, and we have updated uh, also these modules there. So if you use it, you have practical experience to share, and there are things that also in your practical use uh, bug you. Uh, please let us know so we can also continuously update them. Um, what we often see in practice is that people might do all 40 modules and, 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 and once, and that ends up being about a one week course. Uh, if you go, if you train somebody on all 40 modules, 
modules. Um, in practice, that is often not the way it's used. That's an op opportunity. What we often see is that people um, choose specific modules or a set of modules and then usually do a training just on one specific aspect. And they use the, the, the slides that are available. They add their own slides. Basically, you will have the basic introduction on, let's say, uh, on the uh, policy background related to Red Plus MOV and how to build a system and then maybe how you derive activity data and then basically they mix in their own slides from their country, from their region uh, to basically give a specific training on, on the specific aspects, available data, uh, decisions that have been made, forest definition and all of these things that you find from the Red, Red Compass in that. So they use it really as a base to build on uh, they are very specific training they are going to give and that's something that has worked in practice and we actually very much encourage to use uh, the materials um, in that direction. Um, uh, also be aware that uh, for all of these modules you also have background materials so they're all based on guidance materials they're also provided for, for you so that's almost like a textbook so to say that 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 comes along with these uh, with these slides um, and, and with these uh, lecture materials but the practical use uh, maybe to give feedback yes we have a lot of positive feedback we have a lot of uh, people being trained on them and uh, so far there were some minor problems that people reported to us which were most related to specific slides but overall um, it, it seemed to be quite a practical tool and really see it as a as a as a as an open resource that you can use to build also your specific training 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 on and I think that's what we would like to see so if you are an expert in a country a consultant or in higher education institution that has this ambition to train more more people on red plus MRV issues then these materials are there for you to use and feel free to adopt them and adjust them the way you uh, need them for your for your purpose unmuted okay great thank you Martin uh, for that answer um, Carly, I have a question which is very similar for you, um, and it's really about the way which the Red Compass is being used by Red Plus countries um, uh, operationally and also as, as part of their, their national strategy. So is it being used um, more in, in, informally, or is it being actually used as part of a, a country's, you know, um, process to complete the Red Plus um, activities as needed? Maybe you can just explain, if, if maybe there's a couple of countries which are really using this in practice that you can um, mention as well. Great. Uh, yeah, so I can give uh, some examples of uh, how I've um, been involved in uh, the different countries utilizing uh, Red Compass and then also um, some feedback we've had from, from countries as well in terms of how they, they um, countries that we've been trained in how to use it and how they've progressed on to use it. So. I guess uh, GFOI are using the the platform as a as a communication uh, tool primarily um, to 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 its uh, to Red Plus countries, and so um, uh, the UN Reds um, country um, experts, the uh, the Silver Carbon Program, uh, that we're all using the the Red Compass platform to. Um, I guess communicate their um, their training in country, uh, and then those uh, those that are receiving that uh, training are also of course getting access to all of the methods and guidance material and the and I guess the, the presentation material that will be present centered as part of the webinar series as well. So there's a lot of countries using it as a as a resource. Um, a, a, like a one-stop shop, if you like, uh, of all of the, the GFOI, NGD related resources. So that that's one core um, functionality of the platform. Other countries are using it more in, in the workflow aspect that I demonstrated. So, um, for example, uh, some of the countries that we work with in the Pacific and in, in Asia, uh, also in uh, in um, in West Africa. They've uh, used, utilized the tool, the Red Compass um, action um, worksheets to develop up work plans and then also uh, to, to deliver, um, I guess, to prioritize different aspects of the work, but then also as a communication tool to um, 
more clearly communicate the, the training that, that they're needing in a particular area. And, and, and how, I, how this works is that because uh, you've completed all the actions and you've added in some context for the, um, uh, relating to your own situation, you can more effectively communicate your training needs to uh, a particular um, body. So whether that be um, UN Red or whether that be Silver Carbon or, or some other um, some other support um, group that are that are working with you um, through the process. So so having that additional context enables you to more effectively communicate your training needs, and then hopefully at the end of that you actually get much more targeted and useful training and capacity building um, to support you through that particular difficult part of your NFMS or that you're, that you're experiencing. So I guess they're the two main ways that uh, countries are using it. One is a platform to access material, um, resources and, 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 and progress through the actions. And then when those actions become uh, um, quite difficult and maybe the, gu the guidance and the tools you've worked through those and they're still not enough, then it's a communication tool, a communication mechanism um, to, to a particular agency to try and help you in your priority areas um, to, to build that capacity and, and get over that bump that you have that you've um, come up against in, in the process. But I guess that's the two main two main ways. Yeah, thanks, Carly. Um, it's good to see how this is being used in practice by countries operationally, so um, I think that helps a lot. Um, we had uh, one, a couple of questions on um, how to access the links which are in the presentations. Um, so the recording of the lecture will be put online afterwards and you'll be able to see um, all the, the links and everything that's in the presentations there. Um, and also, if you go onto the um, Gofsi Gold website, you can find all the links related to the training material and if you go onto the Red Compass website, you should find all the information which was presented in Carly's talk as well. Um, we have a, a question on the Red Plus training modules um, from Steffi Hakim asking, are there any modules on Red Plus training for community? Um, if you mean uh, how to train communities in, in, in Red Plus, that's um, that's not something we cover because these materials were developed to um, to train MRV professionals, um, so most likely they're, they're more technical than, than you would use with communities. Uh, uh, Martin, perhaps you can s say something more on that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, muted. Uh, thanks for the question, and as Sarah said, I mean the main target audience is of course these national, regional experts and the people who implement it. There is, um, uh, in the Ghost of Good Source book, a whole section on guidance on how to work with communities with so community-based monitoring. And um, there is also a module in the training materials on how to on how to involve communities in this in this monitoring process, including examples. And um, so that should perhaps help you uh, in uh, in your planning. Um, we also will have a webinar, one of the webinars coming up one of the seven ones is, is particularly targeted on community-based monitoring. So, um, and the purpose is maybe not primarily on how to train communities in practice, um, but more on how to, imp how to think about it from the national level and how to get communities in, in, involved. But each of these modules uh, and each of the also background materials often have links to more detailed uh, uh, guidance materials, as it was already said about, for example, the safeguards, which is not a prime topic, but you will, the topic is covered just in a relatively light way, and you will find links to other guidance materials that are related to that. The same is true for the com com community. So the background is being given, the considerations you have to do, and they are linked to not only practical examples, but also additional guidance that has been developed by other experts that you can that you can look 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 into. So if you really like to get into that um, starting source, there this should be a good starting point for for you. Unmuted. Great, thanks, Martin, um, for clarifying that one. Um, I think we just have time for maybe one or two more questions, and then then we'll probably close. Um, so, Carly, a question for you from Nur Baha, who's one of our online participants, um, and they are asking. Um, how user-friendly is this if 
what can we use without the internet? Um, maybe are there some things that you can download and then use afterwards, like the MGD? Is this possible for the Red Compass? Can you just explain uh, a bit more about that? Thanks. Uh, so that was definitely one of the considerations when we were uh, when we were building uh, the platform. Um, we at the moment the platform itself is uh, is only available online. Of course, you can download the resources that are um, linked to the the platform. So the MGD, of course, is one where you can download it as a PDF. Uh, the uh, Gospel Sourcebook is there. The 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 FC, MC manual is there. Those things are all linked, and you can download those. In terms of the actions and the uh, the, um, and all of the action worksheet material that is not yet downloadable um, out of the Red Compass. Um, as I said, we, we we've uh, we've been uh, collating some uh, some some useful user feedback. Um, one we mentioned earlier was around multiple users under the same profile. Another um, useful um, feature that um, has has also been brought up is this uh, ability to download all the actions from the from the Red Compass and um, um, use those actions offline, uh, and and that will be also it's also um, uh, listed as one of the priority uh, feature enhancements um, that uh, we're hoping to make. Um, but at the moment, uh, that's uh, not not available um, at the moment. But it, it, um, it's a, it's a good one to think about in the future. So at the moment uh, the answer is that uh, the, the, the main sort of platform itself, the, the, the uh, themes, concepts and actions are not available offline at this stage. Okay, great. Thank you for that, Carly. Um, and Martin, then the same question for you. Um, I see that there's links to download all the modules and to watch the videos, but what can we do offline and, and what do you need the internet for regarding the training materials, Martin? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, um, so, the, as said, the models you can download and then you can use them offline. Um, uh, you can download the modules individually and those files are reasonable of size. Uh, that should work if you have a reasonable internet connection. You can also download them all at once and then, of course, that's a big file um, that might not be suitable for all the circumstances. Um, uh, we understand that uh, also the so also all the recorded lectures, also the webinars will be on online, and we understand that for some circumstances it might not be all that good of a source um, to use it on online just because internet uh, speeds are not suitable and uh, and so on. What we are planning to do, but that we can only do after the series, is to develop also an offline resource. So basically. Um, to put all the lectures, all the recorded lectures, all the webinars on either a CD or, or a USB stick so you can basically run it offline as a complete offline course. But we will only be able to put that together for the training modules once we have completed this web webinar series and once, and once all the lectures are, re are recorded. But that's a, that, that, that will be becoming available and uh, I guess how that will be dis distributed, we, it will be distributed in the usual events, uh, FCPF, uh, GFOI, uh, GovC Gold, at UNFCCC and related uh, side events. Um, if you have a need to have basically a CD with the training module just because your connection is, is not allowing you to download these, um, just send us an email. So it, in, in these specific circumstances uh, we, can, we can try to arrange that uh, some, 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 somehow. But so far we haven't gotten any feedback that uh, that the internet speed has been too slow that people couldn't download these mod mod modules. So, but if you have a, have that issue for whatever reason, just just send us an email and 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 we can we can find find a way to get you the, the modules in an in, in an offline in an offline manner. Thanks. 
Okay, great. Um, so we're running out of time a little bit, so um, we don't have time for any more questions, but um, a big thank you to all the participants who have been um, engaging with us, asking questions. If we missed your question, um, please send us an email and we'll get back to you with the answer. You can see the email at the bottom of the slide that you can contact us on. Um, and also a thank you to the presenters, Martin and Carly, for giving us a great overview for two of the tools which um, we think you could find really useful um, in your MRV activities. The next webinar will be Tuesday the 25th of April, that's Tuesday next week, on Red Plus Decision Making using the FCPF Decision Support Toolbox. And this is focusing on dis making decisions to do with project boundaries, forest definitions, carbon pools, and activities within Red Plus, and how these decisions affect Red Plus outcom outcomes. So another really interesting webinar that we hope you'll also find very useful. So um, hopefully see you next week for that. Um, for those who participate in six of the seven webinars, you'll be eligible for a certificate of participation. So please sign up for the next webinars on our webpage and get in touch if you have any questions. So thanks everyone again for joining and hopefully see you next week. Muted.